Good morning. A special welcome to those of you who are here for the first time today. Woo! I'm a bit hot, I think, aren't I? A little loud? Yeah, just a little bit. Mm. It's that time of year again, huh? Well, we've been going through uh, Genesis. A few weeks ago, I opened up with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God. And that's pretty much a perfect start for the book about him. And I introduced God to you. And we talked quite a bit about God. We saw, I think it was five attributes from God, four in the English, one in the Hebrew. And that was kind of fun. But then I realized, as I had told you way back, you can't really go through Genesis without hitting all the things we're introduced today. Evolution, how old's the earth, and all that kind of stuff. And so over the last few weeks, we've been looking at that stuff. Last week was creation versus evolution. And that's, if that's a topic that's of interest to you, you can get it on CD or DVD. And what I realized is that one of the biggest issues involving the Bible and modern scientific theory that contradicts the Bible is the age of the earth. Because if the origins evolution theory is correct, that is the goo to you theory, they need millions of years to make that happen. Millions and millions and millions of years. Billions of years. They always add time. That guy came up to me the other day and he said, when I was in school, the universe was millions of years old. Now it's billions of years old. He said, I'm not that old. <laughs> Aged a billion of years since he went to school. And so today's lesson is going to focus in on how old the earth and universe is. And then next week we're going to look at the flood of Noah. Fossils and that kind of thing. How big was the ark and could all the animals have fit in the ark? And I really encourage you not to miss next week. Next week's going to be fun. It's going to be different. And you really, if, you don't, if you're not here, you're going to regret it. So hopefully you'll be able to make it next week. Cancel your vacation, whatever you got to do. <laughs> I was asked, however... How old is the earth? Does it really matter, Steve? And I said, no, not really. In and of itself, as an issue, it doesn't matter. What matters, though, is what does the Bible say? And if the Bible indicates one thing and theory indicates another, scientific theory, then it begins to matter because now we're talking about the integrity of the Scripture and the trustworthiness of the Scripture and whether the Scripture can be taken at face value or not. And that's why I think it's important. So here's what matters, two things. Number one, that we honor God as our creator. That matters. And number two, that we trust the Bible more than we trust the theories of men. When a new theory pops out, we say, oh, the Bible's wrong because the Bible says this. I, re I got an email from a guy who listened to one of our, my lectures on that series from way back, and he talked about all this stuff. He says, how can you believe the Bible when, when archaeologists say this and scientists say that? And I said, how can you believe the archaeologists and the scientists when the Bible says this? He said, well, science is proven. I said, science hasn't proven. Science has theories. And the theories change a lot. And I started giving him some examples of archaeological evidence that has thrown the theories of the diggers off. The Bible's always shown to be true, not the other way around. And the theories of men, they change every few years. But that's the same book Moses wrote 1500 B.C. So, what I want to accomplish this morning, I'm going to give you some cool scientific reasons why I think you should believe the earth is only a few thousand years old, like the Bible says, and not billions or millions of years old, like modern scientific theory says. I think the arguments are solid and they're good. But the point isn't to give you better arguments. The point is so you trust the Bible rather than theories of men. Because who knows, in five years, one of my arguments might get flipped over on its head. Somebody come up with a better argument against it. And then a few years, somebody else will come up with an argument against that argument. That's not the game we need to play. I just want you to see that the Bible's trustworthy. And then when somebody throws out an argument in ten years that challenges the Bible, you can say, ah, I've been down that road. Your theory will change. I'm sticking with the Bible. So that's what I'm going to hope to accomplish this morning. First of all, I do believe the Bible indicates that the world is only several thousand years old not millions and millions of years old. Here's why I think the Bible teaches that. We've got a graphic. I know you can't see it. Uh, but this is a timeline. The Bible gives us genealogy. It gives us genealogy all the way on the left, up through Abraham, which is the, time, the second line on the right, 
And then if you go to the book, that's in Genesis, and then if you go to the book of Matthew, it gives you from Adam all the way up to Jesus. So if the first man up to Jesus, and you tra trace the years, you only get a few, th somewhere around 6,000 years. Now some people said, yeah, but Steve, are the genealogies complete? I'm thinking, well, that's the point of the genealogy, isn't it? Well, let's say it's not complete. Let's say they took a, a little poetic license here and there and pulled out a few names. Well, that gives us a few more years, right? Not millions more years. So the Bible shows us the earth being created several thousand years ago, but modern scientific theory tells us it was created billions of years ago and that life, human life started about a million years ago. Well, how do they know that? How do they believe that? Why do they believe that? Let me tell you why they believe that. Listen to this from Encyclopedia Encarta. One of the reasons they believe that the world is millions of years old. Diamonds. Here's what it says. Crystallized from pure carbon under great heat and pressure in the Earth's upper mantle at depths of at least 180 kilometers, 112 miles, diamonds may vary in age, from between 660 and 3,300 million years, years within the Precambrian period. That's from the encyclopedia. So scientists tell us it's conclusive, takes diamonds millions and millions of years to form, so the Earth must be millions and millions of years old. Okay, that's great. Now, where'd they get that from? How do they know it takes diamonds millions and millions of years to form? How do they know that? If they did it in the laboratory, they'd have to wait a few million years to figure it out, wouldn't they? So frankly, they don't know. And they're not saying, we estimate that it might take... They're just saying, hey, this happened millions and millions of years ago. Let me share with you something that you can know today. Let's say you've got a pet, German Shepherd, you love with all your heart. And we'll call this big beast of a dog, Fluffy. And Fluffy dies. But you don't want to forget Fluffy. Some people have it cremated and they keep the ashes in an urn. Well, you can take Fluffy's ashes and send them off to an organization called Life Gems. And they will turn Fluffy into a diamond for you and you'll have it back within six months. Here's what I know. They can make diamonds in a laboratory in less than six months. That's a fact. Whether they can take millions and billions of years, anybody's got to guess. I don't know. The world's not that old. I just know they can be made in 12 mo uh, six months. Well, this guy figured, well, if they can be made in six months, can we make them faster? So this guy went around, and he researched how to make diamonds, and he made them in 12 hours. Somebody said, hey, that's pretty cool. I wonder if they could be made faster. So somebody else went into a laboratory, made diamonds in a few minutes. These are facts, people. These aren't theories or guesstimates. You can buy them. So when I read that we believe the world is millions and millions and millions of years old because we've got diamonds, and diamonds take millions and millions and millions of years to form, that's circular arguing. That's saying, I believe the world's millions of years old because I believe diamonds are millions of years old. Where's your proof? Where's your evidence? No proof, no evidence, it's just a fact. It's not. Diamonds can be made in minutes. Almost all the arguments they give us as to why they think everything's millions and millions of years old is all just guesswork, and all of it can be turned over on its head. We can't use diamonds or any precious gem to teach us the lesson that the world is millions of years old. The best we can do is learn from diamonds that they can be made in minutes. So I guess we could use it as evidence that the world was formed in minutes. God said, and it was so. I'm all right with that version. Lines up with the scripture, lines up with science. The other one doesn't line up with anything other than the guess of some people who don't want it to line up with the Bible. But there is a lesson we can learn from precious gems. Proverbs 3.15, listen to this. She, that is wisdom, is more precious than rubies. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. We love precious gems. We'll spend lots of money for them. But the Bible says there's something more valuable than rubies and precious gems. It's wisdom. And then Psalm 111 says this in verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. 
Gems can't point us to millions of years. Gems can point us to wisdom, and wisdom points us right to God. So rather than looking at a diamond, scientists, thinking the world's millions of years old, how about look at that diamond and think of wisdom, the lesson God wants us to learn from it and be directed to him.